Hello, you are watching uh, part one of a Resident Evil retrospective podcast series I did with my friend Harrison. Um, this is part one, I titled it I'm in a Tank, because um, it mainly deals with the games that have uh, tank controls in the Resident Evil franchise. So in this one we're covering um, the, the original PS1 Resi, the remake, Resi Zero and Code Veronica. Um, I really hope you enjoy it and I'll see you for the next part. Thank you very much, bye-bye. Okay. Um, so here we are, Harris and Thorn. Um, Alice Everson. In in the lead up to probably one of my most anticipated games that's actually definitely coming out this year. <laughs> um, being Resident Evil Village, also known as Resident Evil Eight, if they decide to, but they don't really like it being called that for some reason. It's got like V one one three. It the, does, but they're really funny. They're like, no, just call it Village. Don't just call it Village. <laughs> Um, so in that vein, in our own excitement, I think we both sort of went on a, uh, a Resident Evil tirade as soon as they, um, announced it. And as soon, especially since we got a release date, I myself have just been going through as many Resident Evil games as I physically can. Um, I had about two weeks off work a few weeks back and I basically finished, I think I finished four or five Resi games in that time. I just sat and cranked them out. <laughs> and um it was a good time so this this is going to be a, a retrospective series so to speak mostly of just conversation all of just conversation <laughs> but um just discussing the different eras of resident evil and some of our favorite moments and then as we get towards the end we'll talk a little bit about our hopes for the um the future of the franchise um the only thing i haven't put that we're going to discuss is the is the resident evil movies oh but, wow. We'll just get that out of the way real quick. I've watched all seven of them. There's six. Six? Yes, six of those three animated movies. Oh, I haven't seen the animated movies. They're fine. They're not that good. <laughs> um, but I have seen all of the Miliovovich movies. And yeah, they're, um, they're some of them. I think they're great. I mean, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I really like them. Um, I think the first three are like... Are like, aren't that good. Um, especially like two and three. But like four, five and six are like really really fun yeah well. i i remember thinking the first one was fine yeah and then two and three i was like oh my god i'm so fucking bored yeah and then there's some, two. there's some sort of click that happens where they go into like it it just becomes pure nonsense <laughs> and at that point everything becomes so much more infinitely enjoyable yeah because um i, I think it's because um paul ws anderson like directed four five and six yeah it's the old very thing but like because like four, it was like this really, really great action scene. Whereas like, whereas um, whereas like all these like these clones of um, fucking um, what was the character's name? Oh, I mean the other, yeah, 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 of her character. character, Alice. Alice, that was it. Yeah. yeah, and it's like it's really well made action scene. It's like pure nonsense, but like it's really well made and really. It's insane. I just remember that because it's a in retribution. They're like they're setting it up for like this massive, unbelievably huge like final sequence yeah, like, and then i guess they couldn't get the funding to pay for the actors or some or they just decided they didn't want to do that anymore i mean um yeah that kind of happens in every movie um because isn't it like four like because four ends with like umbrella coming after them and like like uh, and i think they plan something completely different for the fifth movie yeah but like with that but like because um doesn't five end with like the white house bit and like and, like leon like yeah, Barry. Leon's there. I think Wesker comes back yeah. or something. Because yeah, Wesker's the president. Yeah, yeah. And then they're, all, <laughs> they're all back and they're all about to do this massive fight. And then as soon as the sixth one starts, everyone just died. Everyone yeah. fucked up and died in that last bit. And it's like, oh, okay. I guess we don't even get to see that, but whatever. Yeah. And then the final one, the final one is insane. I, I barely remember it. Um, I, got, <laughs> I, I got intoxicated and I was like... <laughs> And I was just trying to like take it in while also reading Chinese takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but I remember because there's like a bit like the end of sixth movie where she like sacrifices herself, and I was like crying because like I was like because <laughs> 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 you were like, intoxicated. And I, you was were like... I was intoxicated. I was like really emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and the Resident Evil Six uh, sacrifice made you teary. It made me cry. Yeah. Brilliant. So I guess we'll start where it all started, which was uh, in terms of games with Resident Evil 1 on the PlayStation 1. Now I have put a good chunk of time into this game. 
Um, I feel in many ways it's one of the most frustrating Resident Evil games that exists. And it's also, for some reason, one of the most stressful. Um, I got to the final part where you go back to the mansion and I think I just hit a brick wall and something else came up and I didn't I didn't finish it. Did you you did finish it, didn't you? No, I didn't. Um Oh fuck. Okay, we're both <laughs> shit. <laughs> we're awful people. Um I'm pretty sure we're both on like um because I just got to the bit because 'cause you go back to the mansion after beating plant forty two and you um um and and I remember because like, I did it like three or four times, like like each time like a hunter would get me. I'll make like loads of progress. Come to get me, and I should be like, oh, whatever. And I'll come back like a week later. Yeah, and that's exactly and what was happening with me. And I, I, and part of me was always like, I don't really want to play it. <laughs> yeah. Like it was really yeah, hard. Very... Yeah, it was really hard to like muster the energy to want to be like, yeah, I want to go get killed by a fucking hunter again. There's like <laughs> one. There's like one corridor in that game where like there's like a hunter that runs down. There's like two hunters in the corridor. Oh um oh um that's in, like the corridor above the save room, right? Yeah, and yeah. and. And I was just like, oh my, when, when, when they're both aware of you, it is like impossible to kill them. Yeah, unless you have like a, unless you have, unless you have a lot of shotgun ammo. I mean, I had a lot of shotgun ammo and even then it was like, it wasn't working. And I was just like, I can't, <laughs> I'm not built for this. Um, it is definitely a unique title. It was interesting. It's, it's the last one I played before doing this, this, you know, this recording. So um after playing everything else especially after playing the remake and going back to it it was almost like it was like prehistoric by comparison i wouldn't say like <laughs> oh it's, it's, it's like even compared to like so i played a bit of two even compared to like two like the quality and like the levels and stuff it's yeah like the, quality, like the environments and the pre-rendered backgrounds is such a jump up it's just it's just how it looks as well it look it i was just like oh my god this is <laughs> it it feels very 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 early days playstation yeah, you know, because it's because the, the environments aren't even as complex as something as like Metal Gear Solid. It's it's very very basic. Yeah, but um, I find that stuff kind of charming a lot of the time. Yeah, no, I and do. I think... I, and the music as well. The music the is like great. this this weird MIDI keyboard thing, which is just <laughs> it's just fantastic. And of course, you've got all of the voice acting, which is just like I love it. <laughs> you just sort of sit there. And you're like, "What was happening <laughs> in, in that in that voiceover booth? Like, what were they smoking? What was going on?" <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. Um, um, I, um, but I think, uh, I, um, but I think after playing like, because I I, I kind of wish I played it before playing the remake, hmm. because the remake is like such a step up in terms of like the everything, um, <laughs> literally everything, <laughs> literally <laughs> every aspect. It's like I know I feel like the main bit that kind of like signifies it is like you know um um, um there's a bit like like because you know the roots of part forty two is in that basement. And like in the remake, it's like this like aquarium ring, and there's mm. like sharks. But like in the original, it's just down there. It's like it's just like this corridor that has like a bunch of sharks on like some knee high water, <laughs> and it, it's really lame. It's very weird. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's an interesting game as well because I think even compared to remake, it's like combat is so unviable an option. Yeah, because there's like no lock on. Or yeah, like it's and it's very, very light. And like you can put like ten pistol shells into some zombies and it won't take them out. Mm. And you're just like, this is ridiculous. I think it is incredibly hard. And you know, I mean, I'm not trying to brag. I do have um a platinum in like Resi Seven. Like I have played every other Resi game, but I've not really found any of them that hard. And then Resi One is just like insane. To I would me. say it's like I, 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 I try. Uh, um, I kind of think remake is a bit harder just because of the oh, really? stress level from the um, oh burning bodies. Uh, yeah, this uh, what do you call them? The uh, crimson heads. Crimson heads. Yeah. Yeah. Just just from like the extra stress level. Like if I don't have this amount of stuff, then like in twenty minutes, this thing will come to life and kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I think like. But I think I think I don't know. There was something about we'll talk about remake separately in a second. But yeah. it's, it's I think that aspect. I don't know. I think because remake is, it feels more polished in terms of the control you have over everything, or the fact you've got lock on and stuff. Yeah. I always felt um, more in control of the environment, and I knew where I was going to go, and I knew how I was going to circumvent it. Whereas, because PS One version has that like inherent clunkiness, yeah. it's um, it's different. Yeah, it's a shame that um, neither of us played two and three. Yeah, because... like I played like a 
bits of them, but like yeah. I don't really play them properly just to try them. Because I know that they're both regarded as pretty much like the first three games are all regarded as masterpieces, pretty much on PS One. Classics, yeah. Yeah, um, you know, popcorn classics. Um, but the but Resident Evil Two, <laughs> I think especially a lot of people rave about, and I also I mean was interested to see why everyone was so obsessed with Resi Three when it first came out, and like why everyone wanted a remake of that so badly, and how it was supposedly disappointing with the actual remake they made. Um, but. I think I got the gist of it. I feel bad. Yeah. Part of me does feel bad. And I do feel like one day I will actually finish the PS1 trilogy. Oh, because, yeah, because it's like I've played pretty much every... I've played every other mainline Resident Evil game. Yeah. And some of the ones not mainline. I've played every single other game. And it's like... And the ones that are like regarded as some of the best, I just I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I just, I'm just not built for it right now. <laughs> and I'd much rather be playing... I don't fucking know. Much rather be playing Enter the Gungeon because it's pretty, <laughs> you know, you just turn your brain off and shoot shit. Yeah. Um, but um, no, I think I will go back. They're definitely three special games. And from what I do know of two and three as well, is that they, they're all sort of benchmarks for their time and each one leveled up in a different way. But because we didn't really play them, I feel like it's disingenuous for us to talk about it any further. That's what true. we did play, though... Um, it's not technically the one that came out after the PS1 games, but it is what I feel the most thematically relevant to what we're discussing is the Resident Evil remake, um, mm. which I played on PS4, so. um, which is a brilliant remaster of it's a, a brilliant game. Yeah, of a brilliant remake. And it's when you're looking at those pre-rendered cutscenes and, uh, sorry, the backgrounds and everything, and you're just kind of like, how did they do this? There's just so much going on. And it's it's, like it's, so it's insane. And it, it levels up in zero as well with some of the stuff. It's like for a GameCube, you're sort of like, this is they, obviously it's actually not that difficult because they were able to pre-render everything. Yeah. But it was like, this is incredible. Um, Resident Evil HD, as I'm calling it, the remake, um, I had a ton of fun with the game. Yeah, I think in terms of like just pure Resident Evil, like fixed camera, like all that shit, like, well, like, 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 do you have any inventory space? You need ribbons and that. I think it's probably like the best in terms mm-hmm. of just getting like pure Resident Evil like experience. It's got all of the landmarks of the series in it, yeah. and it's also even got the replayability because you've got the two characters and you've got um, you've got so many different, you've got loads of different quirks between their playthroughs and There's things. Like that... Six different endings, I think. yeah, yeah. Um, and I had a really good time with it, but I was incredibly stressed the whole time. <laughs> it's like a good stress, not like it's, I, I found it like I found like a more easier to manage stress. Yeah. Than, than um than the original. Yeah, it's it's the Crimson Heads as an, as an addition is um is an interesting one because it adds such an element of like a ticking time bomb in every single corridor. Okay. Um, I don't actually think I burnt a single body in my playthrough. I did it quite a lot because I was just like so nervous about the game. Yeah, because I think I, what I realised is that if you do have Crimson Heads, while they hit quite hard, they're actually quite easy to dodge. I mean, so, like, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't think you're wrong, but like just because of how fast they are and how much damage, like how much ammo they take, yeah. I, I'd still rather them not to be there. That makes sense. It was, it was just, it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting like interim game where they've still got the goofiness of the like voice acting. Um, but everything else is genuinely creepy. And also the stuff with like Lisa Trevor um, stuff towards the end of the game where she's like following you around and you're in the crypt and all the rest of it. Like it's, it's freaky as fuck. It's very freaky. Isn't yeah. It? Especially like that first time you go to her cabin and you, um, and you get like that crank. Um, and I'm pretty sure you get the crank there and you, um, and you go back out and like you just save and you go back out and like she whacks you over the head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's also a part later on where you're in like those caves or something later on, I think where you're doing the flamethrower bit mm. and you go around the corner and she's just there. There's no music, there's no <laughs> announcement or anything. She's just right there and you're like, oh fuck, okay, I've got to, I've got to deal with this now and just run away and move around her. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil H, I don't know what I'm calling HD, but the remake is like, it's it's a very it's it's got it's one of the 
That's a stupid statement. I was about to say <laughs> it's that it's a re- it's one of the only fun tank control ones, and I'm like, that's a complete bullshit oh. statement. <laughs> I love I loved most of the tank control ones I played. Um, <laughs> But it is, I think it's what you're saying is like, it's the quint- it feels like the quintessential Resident Evil experience. Mm. Um, like, like at its purest and at its yeah. most visceral in terms of the terror. And just how much like, it sounds like, it's like evil goofy as it is. So. Yeah. It's B-movie horror. It's like, it's, yeah. but it's, it, it manages to get under your skin in certain ways. And I think it was also, at the time, it was obviously a really interesting thing to release because, um, they they actually messed around with all of the puzzles and like the locations of items and stuff. So it meant that even if you were an expert on PS One Resi, you you couldn't be an expert on this straight away. Um, and so I like think there's so many more wings of like there's so many more like places to go. And there's like um like there's that puzzle. Um, there's, and it's, it's not even like really a puzzle, but it's just that one bit with the um with those um it's with those um what do you call them um it's with those knights. And they have like the spinning blades. Yeah. And at the first time I did that, I had like no clue what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, and it, it was also interesting that like when the hunters came out in the remake, I didn't feel as threatened as I did in the PS One version for yeah, some I reason. I, 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 I was like, I, I can combat this, and it's, ma- it's actually mainly because of the lock-on mechanic. The yeah. lock-on mechanic, which I think it was introduced in Code Veronica, it is, is a like. Free, actually. Oh really? Was it? I'm not, I think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I remember seeing a review saying that Code Veronica was where they like that was a really great step up that they added lock on or something. But um, that completely just changes the game. It makes you feel more capable in every single situation. And also be able to like quick turn at any point. Yeah. Like, it's more easier. But yeah, Resident Evil remake is a fantastic time. I'm glad I finally finished it because I think I bought it when it came out on PS4. And I never got around to going back into it. I think I actually, I've actually attempted a playthrough of Resident Evil Remake about 10 times. I must yeah, have. Yeah, because I tried playing it like a year ago or so, and I just couldn't. Um, I think I got like two or three of the deaths. No, I think I got like, no, I think I got like one of the deaths, death masks. Mm. And like, and I was just like, <laughs> I was just too scared of the crimson heads. And that's I tried what, it again. That's what I, I remember. Every time I would try and take a break away from it and come back, I'd always be so lost that I would just start a new playthrough. And the only time I finished it was this time. And I remember, because it was on my days off, I finished the whole game in one sitting. <laughs> I, started, I started it at like 11 o'clock and I just kept playing until I finished it. That, like, like 10 o'clock that evening, I think. <laughs> I just finished the game and I was like, oh, great, great. And that seems for me, that I think I did it. I did that with Resi Zero, I think, as well. And no, I might have did it in two playthroughs. But for some reason, with those type of games, that was like the best way to play it for me because it was like, I have to stay with it and I know what I'm doing and I know where I am and I was able to comprehend all of it. Um, also, you're not losing any of that knowledge. Like, you yeah. You don't take a day off or anything. Um, but it, no, I really, really like Resident Evil Remake. I think I will do definitely do another playthrough um, in time to come. Um, I did a Chris playthrough. I believe you did a Jill playthrough. I did Jill, yeah. Um, and Chris is actually the harder of the two because he can hold like two less items and like you can't do the V Jolt puzzle. And also on forty two. Yeah, no, because doesn't Chris come with a small key? Yeah. No, um, no, no, Jill comes with a small key or like a lock pick. J- J- yeah, a lock pick for all of the small de- yeah, and whereas Chris has to find those as items. Hmm. And I was like, Oh, I've definitely drawn the short store here. <laughs> but um I I love as well that it, it, it feels so self contained as well. Um, and even though it was a remake, they could have easily shoehorned in some bigger world building stuff. And I think they do with some documents and things. Yeah, because there's um, uh, 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 yeah, because there's that one bit in the lab, and it's like the password changed like Ada Wong, yeah, or something like that. But like that's literally it. I think. But that's but and I think there's some files or something that like talk about Birkin or someone else. But they didn't try and shoehorn, you know, this bigger idea of what the franchise is or the fact that Wesker was going to come back, you know, and was still alive and all this other... Like, they could have very easily shoehorned a load of stuff in and instead they were just like, no, we're going to keep this as the game it needs to be, which is this sort of self-contained Resident Evil game. And that's... I think that's why it still sort of remains timeless, even though it came out... Fucking hell, did it come out in, like, 2002? Yeah, it's about 20 years old. It really doesn't feel like... It's a nearly 20-year-old game. Yeah. That is insane because it is so, I mean, it's stupid to say, but it's playable. Like it's so fresh. It still feels like, it feels like such a modern game now. 
and it's, I think it's a lot of that to do is how they've updated it for PS4 and with the controls and everything and just, you know, stretching out the aspect ratio and things if you want to. But, um, yeah, but I suppose even that is like not that like major differences. No. It's just like new controls and whatnot. But that is crazy. It's come out 20 years ago. Fucking hell. <laughs> That's insane. Um, and then obviously, after that one, I played Resident Evil Zero. Same. Which um, is okay. I'd say it's like a very good. solid 7 out of 10. Yeah, that's, exact, <laughs> that's like exactly how I feel about it. Yeah. Um, Resi Zero has a lot of flaws and it has this weird mechanic where there's no item box and you have to just drop stuff and pick it back up. Yeah. And I kind of get it if it was like, I don't know. I'm not really sure what they were trying to achieve with that. I guess it's because like, um, I guess it's because it, was, uh, I guess it was like the sixth um, tank controlled fixed camera resident yeah. game. By that point, they really want to change stuff up, so they're probably sick of making them. Well, a lot of people say that Resi Zero is kind of like, it's the hard, it's the thing for like Resi Master. There's like, if you played every other one and you want a challenge, go play Resi Zero. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that. No. Um, it kind of feels on par with Res, like Remake. I found it probably a bit easier than Remake. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's a weird game where it kind of just feels like a spin off, because it is a spin off. It doesn't feel like a mainline title, hmm. even though it's sort of billed as one as a prequel, but it, it does feel a little bit cheaper isn't the right word, but like it feels lesser than especially remake. I mean, uh, uh, I guess that's because, um, I, I guess that's because of like the plot and whatnot. Cause the plot yeah. is just so like, like, I think it's probably like the, the Resi game were like the worst, like, like this plot. Like, I, know I can't really remember it. I remember there was like a bug guy. He like, yeah, he turns into like, <laughs> and it's like a reincarnation of like, the old oh, yeah. Or something. Yeah. I don't give a shit about any of this. <laughs> I just want to shoot shit and find <laughs> items and stuff. I did I did quite like a lot of the environments though, because you start off on the train. The train's and excellent. The train, the train the travel train section is is fantastic. And also when you go up on top of the train and they did this pre-rendered background of the train moving with all of the water and like everything splashing off, I was like, oh my fucking god. It's so cool. <laughs> it's but it's so pretty as well for yeah. a GameCube game. And I was just this is in an must, amazing about a detail. That must be like insane in 2002. None of that. I would have <laughs> shit myself. I would have yeah. shit myself. But it, yeah, it's it's it, that whole train section to start with is it feels like such a refresher um, out of like remake and the PS1 games. It, it kind of feels like a crash course in like yeah. Resi games. Yeah, like a very short like hour long bit. It's really good. it's fantastic. And then and then you go into and it's like the umbrella training facility, isn't it? Yeah. Um, which is just another mansion, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's got a really cool environmental thing with just the fact that you've got all, like these teaching rooms and like these lecture halls and all the rest of it. And it's got a really good eerie vibe to it. But um, I'm not a fan of the characters. I think they're fine. I mean, like Rebecca's like, Rebecca's okay, but like, I don't really care for Billy that much. Yeah, the other dude's just kind of there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's never brought up in any other Resident Evil thing I'm, <laughs> as I'm aware of. Like, he probably got munched by a zombie when he, he left. Probably. <laughs> or he's in something and Rebecca's just like pulling out a photo and looking at him and thinking, oh, one day I'll find you and puts it back again. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I also thought the last boss in this one was a bit weird because obviously the big mechanic with this game is that you can switch back and forth between the characters at any given point. And that was what that was like the big selling point for the game. And it's interesting because it makes it makes some interesting puzzles. It makes for some interesting, like new concepts with puzzles and like um, exploration and stuff. But most of the time I found that I was just playing as one of them with the other one following close by. I never really. Yeah. Cause there's only like three or so points. We have to like swap to another character. Yeah. There's that really good bit where you have to play as Billy um, saving Rebecca. And I think it's mm. like, Rebe or, is it Re or is it the other way around? Oh yeah. And then You're there's running through the, the fucking monkeys. Oh, I hate them. <laughs> I can't kill them. <laughs> So annoying. It's anti-monkey propaganda anyway. I can't uh, stand uh, it. Zero. Attack. I remember playing it and just thinking, oh, Harry isn't going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I give this a Resi Zero out of Resi 10. <laughs> um, but no, I think, I think Resident Evil Zero is fine. I had a pretty good yeah. time with it and I was enjoying it while I played it. I just, there was a lot more bullshit in this game. Um, and especially with the monkeys, like you can get stun locked into like, just repeating them hitting you on the, over and over and you can't get out of it sometimes. Um, 
there's annoying stuff like that. And also I don't really remember the bosses. I don't remember any sort of unique aspects of the bosses. I remember the final boss. Isn't there, there's, there's a one the boss is like a bat in a church or something? Yeah, because basically the idea is that all of the bosses are like umbrella animals. experiments on animals. Because yeah. the first yeah, the first boss is a like scorpion. a fucking scorpion on the train. <laughs> How to get there? <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> there's nothing really inventive about it, as opposed to like Resi remake where you've got like you've got the giant snake you've got plant 42 you've got tyrant towards the end you know you've got those like memorable fights and also really stressful fights at points i mean then none of them are particularly difficult because the way it's bosses sort of work in the tank games is you kind of just shoot at them until they die yeah that's very sure. like dodge yeah. attacks, there's not that it's very rare that there's any like interesting mechanics to it as opposed to just shoot it till it dies and they tried to sort of fix that in the end of resi zero because you have to as far as i remember one of you has to distract the thing and the other one has to turn these um yeah, yeah. rebecca has to turn the like switches to open the sunroof up because it's it's like vulnerable to sunlight or something something like that yeah yeah and that's how it sort of ends and then you get the the cut scene where rebecca looks at the mansion and is like oh i'm gonna go help them and she she has no idea what a fucking nightmare she's in for <laughs> doesn't she um i could you actually see rebecca and jill's play for it all but doesn't she just spend the whole game just like in like a med like doesn't she, doesn't she spend like the whole game in like a medicine room or something well in chris's playthrough you basically there's moments where chris gets like poisoned or trapped oh, right. and then you play as rebecca but the thing is most of the time so like after you fight the snake for the first time to get like the I think it's the crest or whatever it is in that first room, um, Chris gets poisoned. If you get attacked once, Chris is poisoned by that that thing, and then you play as Rebecca and you have to go find a poison for you know a cure for him in the medicine room, and that's fine. But the, the problem is that like there's I I'd, I'd already cleared out those hallways or I'd already knew how to properly circumvent them where there weren't even maybe any zombies left in there. And so it's just kind of a 10 minute diversion where you're going and all you're waiting for is for the doors to open, you know, <laughs> which gets old after like two times. And then you just sort of stop thinking about it. You know, it's, yeah, it's a cool that, concept, but yeah. Cause that bit in, um, in Joel's campaign, cause if you get hit by a physical moan, the snake or like something like that. And, um, and yeah, you, I think you're right. Yeah. Cause you, something like that. And all yawn, that is, it's yawn. Yawn. That was yeah. it. Uh, and all that is in um, Joel's play for was just running from the medicine room and just giving yourself some. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's um yeah, it doesn't really add much to the gameplay all in all. Hmm. But um no, I think I think Resi Zero definitely does some interesting stuff and, and like I said, the switching between characters is an interesting mechanic. I just think it wasn't really used in interesting ways. I feel like I feel like actually they do the two character thing more interestingly in like um Resi five. Like where one of you has to like use a flamethrower and the other one has to like shoot the weak spots while you're shooting the flamethrower kind of thing. Yeah, well, I suppose that's because Resi Five is designed for co-op. Well, it is. And but Zero it... doesn't have co-op. No, because I Zero was um it was initially initially meant to be an N64 exclusive. Yeah. It was, it, yeah. yeah, and um and then they canned it and were like, okay, we'll come back to this and reconfigure it as a and then it became you know the sequel, the GameCube standpoint game. Um, it's a good game. It's a fine. It's a good Resi game. It's a solid Resi game. If you're only going to play one Resi game, though, probably not this one. Yeah, definitely. Now, Resi Zero is not one of my favorite Resident Evil games, and even though I'd say Resident Evil Remake isn't one of my favorites, I would say it's you know it's the it's stamp. Top tier. It's top tier, and it's definitely the quintessential Resident Evil experience. <laughs> However, I would say that our next title, <laughs> Code Veronica is probably my favorite tank control Resident Evil game. Yeah. I fucking adore Code Veronica. <laughs> I think it's fucking amazing in every way. <laughs> I played Code Veronica X on the PS4 like release, <laughs> um, which I think has some like extra moments and like extra cutscenes. Yeah. I thought it was fucking brilliant. I mean, it's definitely like probably the most ridiculous Resident Evil. It's insane. <laughs> but also, it's like you start off in a prison, and then you're in a mansion again, and then you're under underwater, and then you're like, then you get through the mansion, and then you look up, and it's like this massive gothic, like Dracula esque mansion that you're going <laughs> up to for the final sort of bits of the game, and then you come back to. I loved it. I thought it was absolutely insane, and I, I don't know. I don't know why this one resonated with me so much as opposed to all of the others. But it's still goofy. 
and like the character of Steve is so <laughs> fucking annoying. <laughs> and there's that there's that whole moment where um he sees his zombie dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does he just scream no while shooting? He goes, he goes, no, he goes, Father! And then he's like <laughs> shooting him as he's screaming father. And it was brilliant. I also like the fact that we were playing as Claire again, but also yeah. it's it's I I really like the opening in the prison. I think it's it's got some genuine creepy vibes to it, and also you do feel trapped in that environment. It's just got a load of interesting like circumst like like situations that it puts you in. Things like you, that whole opening section where you don't have you're not allowed to take any metal items through with you. That's quite fun. Yeah. yeah. And so you're like, as soon as you do that, you're constantly dreading, like, I hope to fuck I don't have to encounter any <laughs> zombies or anything because I'm screwed. I don't have any weapons. And then, you know, the last time you go through that, all the windows crash through and you're like, fuck, I need to get <laughs> like through. Five zombies come in. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not sure what it is. I found Code Veronica quite difficult at points. I think Code Veronica's, I, found, I probably found it the hardest starting the tag controlled ones. And the most difficult parts were always the boss fights for me. Yeah, there, there's, there's that, oh god, there's that really stupid one on the plane. <laughs> oh. My god, that fight on the plane, I, I, I think that took me two hours on its own. It took me a long time, because you just need to get like all this stuff in, because you need to shoot it like 20 times, yeah. and then hit the thing, and if you don't get it right, then you have to like do it again. two minutes for it to like really be able to shoot and you stuff. And trying to dodge it is like insanely difficult. And if you, if, you do, if you don't dodge it whilst you're towards the end of the plane, you get knocked out and you're dead. <laughs> it's it's challenging at points and i think it is also one of them like it's very very flawed in those ways like it's not a perfect game by any means but there is something about the you know you've got the the um the twins supposedly which is just one dude dressing up as his sister yeah. um and i just remembered d doing that whole section where you're going up to that mansion, their like home mansion, and you've got like the lightning coming down and it's like moody. And I was like, oh my, I remember playing that bit and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> I don't know what it was about that particular section, but it was something about the fact that like, it was just like, oh wow, it's so gothic and creepy. And like, it's literally looks like it's like a Dracula mansion. This is fantastic. This is brilliant, like art design, a brilliant level design, and I love it. And then about, I wouldn't say halfway through. I'd say it's more like three quarters of the game. You switch and you take control as Chris for the remainder. Probably more like two thirds. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I the Chris stuff really hard, especially on the end, especially especially on that island. What is the island? Well, well um, uh, the, the no, because um, when you first play as Chris, you go back to that island. Yes, you Chris, do. Yeah. And you're sort of trapped, because you basically go back through everything that Claire went through yeah. in different circumstances. And I just love that part of the game because you can sort of take your knowledge of the of um, of the environment. You already know how it's all laid out. And then you can use that as you're going through the second time around. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't find any part of the game particularly tough as much as I did the, that boss fight on the plane. That boss fight on the plane it is like seared into my memory is like tough. <laughs> Um, yeah. But there was, th there's definitely a lot of bullshit moments in the game. But it didn't, it wasn't enough to detract from how much I enjoyed the rest of it. And you've also got these weird enemies which have these like elast elastic oh, arms and stuff. The, the thing was, <laughs> there's no difficulty setting in Code Veronica. You just play on the standard difficulty. And once you get a good grenade launcher or whatever you're using, and you can go through. Like I feel like Code Veronica is more combat focused. Definitely, yeah. There's I feel, yeah. yeah. Zero, I feel I feel like there's less of an emphasis on avoid it if you can, or more of like just kill them. Like you have the ammo for it, and it feels good to shoot in this one. And I, it definitely has the lock on, and like you've got laser sights and stuff. I thought it was a really fun game. There's some weird moments where you where you change over to Steve. Um, yeah, that's that one bit, yeah. And then you've got like Uzis, and you're running <laughs> through, and you're Uziing everything. That was a that was an interesting part. I was like, what what is it's this like about? Five minutes long. It's like you go for like two rooms. Or yeah. Yeah, I I'm not sure what they were going for, and then Steve turns into a fucking zombie dude at the end. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> you have to like run away, and you need to use healing items. Yeah, but like if you don't, I didn't have the healing items at the time, so I had to like do this like trick where you like run around them. Yeah, walk back, and I just couldn't do it for like an hour. It's ridiculous. I, it's a really weird sequence. Like if it's a set piece action sequence, it shouldn't have relied anything to do with your like supplies. It should have just been you run. And it's over. But yeah, he dies. 
and you're like, oh, wow, okay. And what was the point of his character in any form then? Yeah, literally, it sounds like... <laughs> <laughs> and she says to him that she loves him, I think. Or no, he, he says to her that she he loves him. It. He loves her. Yeah. And I think she's like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine? My dude, Steve, he's just like protected her and he's become a zombie and he's dying. And then it was all for nothing. And he's like, well, at least I can tell you I love you. And she just turns around and she's like, I, sorry, you're like a brother to me or something. Like, <laughs> just completely fucks him off. Yeah, that's a whole weird section because um, you have that, you're playing as Chris for a massive amount of time. And then you get to the boss fight with um, the sister. That bit's really cool. I like that. Yeah, fight. it's a really good boss fight. And like, she's got the flame attacks and everything. And it's really easy to dodge and really well te telegraphed, but also completely fair. And like, for some reason, the, the combat in this one just felt really good. There is a bullshit boss with the um, Nosferatu dude, which is their dad. I didn't find that one too hard. It's because you can get knocked off the building really easily. Yeah. I didn't but even I, use the sniper rifle. I, I didn't even realize I was doing anything special, but I just used the sniper. And then it gives you like an actually like specific cutscene for her using the sniper and stuff, which is cool. But yeah, so you're playing as Chris for a quite a few hours and i think this is one of the longest resi games it's like, it's like yeah it's like, yeah because it's like 11 hours or something it like took that. me a while yeah it was definitely longer than zero and hd it was like it was a big it was a big step up from those because i finished it, remake in one sitting i finished zero and i think two settings and i think code Veronica took me like several sittings over several days and i and i remember doing the tyrant boss on the plane and i had to go for a walk and then come back because i was just getting like too frustrated <laughs> with it <laughs> and i didn't know what i was doing wrong um but yeah so you're playing as chris for a great time you get you get that great fight with um the sister i can't remember her name it's like victoria or veronica or something something like that yeah. it's not veronica it's something like that but um no wait, wait the game's called code veronica isn't it yeah but it's not her. Is what is it? Code Veronica? Code Veronica is the name of it's like their ancestor, the family's ancestor or something, I believe. Oh, yeah. And it's that specific yeah. strain of the I'm not even sure. I can't remember. <laughs> look look how look how knowledgeable we are. We're talking about the game, we have no fucking clue what it's about. Um and then you suddenly take control again as Claire. And I was like, Oh, okay, so clearly this is them saying gear up because this is gonna be the final boss. And so I put like some of the best weapons on her and then you do that bit with Steve and then suddenly she's locked in that room. And that's it for her, right? And that's it for the whole game. Yeah. And it's like, well, she's got the fucking grenade launcher. <laughs> 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 Which is, it's a stupid scenario, but it meant that I couldn't put that stuff on Chris. And then you got that final fight, which was sh shit. It's but, just because like, you got those little fucking things on the floor. Yeah, so it's, it's like they give you too much to worry about. So they give you the tentacles of the like woman and then she's like slapping about and hitting you and then she also shoots out all these things but then also don't get too close to some stuff because it'll poison you and then you'll start losing health because of poison and then once you've taken her like I, what kept happening when I was playing it was I'd get her down and then I'd get to the second phase of the fight but I'd go down in one hit because I, I had no healing items left and I you know, was, was really low on health but um, it ends with you picking up this like you know rocket as as resi games do and you you sort of track her down and then like finally fire her and it was a, it was a really satisfying moment when i finally finished that boss that's a good bit yeah <laughs> i i i really love code veronica i think it is my favorite of the tank control games but it has some unfair moments and also has some things that stop it from being i think stop it from realizing what the potential is it's also one of the only um things i'm aware of where chris and claire are both in it together i think that's the only one right? yeah it's weird it's weird yeah. that that's the case but then it also ends quite weirdly because you have the big fight with wesker and this game feels like it should have been a mainline resident evil game yeah it, I know, it, it seems more like resident evil 3 than resident evil 3 definitely yeah. it, it's it's um it should be remade you, yeah you reckon i think so I think it's definitely playable in its current state, yeah. but in terms of what you could do with a newer engine and like um, that new that new gameplay they've had in the newer games, and also just like some of those set pieces, like I'm imagining that gothic castle in like the new RE engine, and just like oh man, that'd be fucking sick. That would be cool. <laughs> And I just know that they'd be able to edit some of the story and probably you know shrink it down a little bit because I don't think it needs to be as long as it is. Um, but it, I think. 
there's also so it was sort of disappointing to me that you like you do all that stuff towards the end and then you're having this fight with wesker but the whole fight with him is just a cutscene. i'm yeah. like oh come on you could have let me do something but it, <laughs> it, it's a weird game because it perfectly sets up resident evil 5 yeah it like resident evil if you play resident evil 5 straight after this game it would make complete sense you'd be like this is the this is the direct sequel to code veronica yeah. and so it's because of that that it feels so much like a mainline game but i think if it i think if you remade it it's one of the i think it definitely needs a remake more than resi 4 does 100 yeah um resi 4 just because of how many ports it's had as well is is kind of like it's kind of timeless and like that art style doesn't even really need updating like all of it it's kind of perfect it's a great solid game it's just such a fun and easy game to pick up and yeah play. um and it, it it's just fucking brilliant <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why because we know they are making a remake for Resi 4 but it's yeah. like I, I would be much more interested in the Code Veronica remake because I think there's so much more you could do and I want to see those environments in a different light and also rework those bosses to make them you know more interesting and I don't know something something about Code Veronica clicked with me I still can't quite figure out what it is but it clicked with me and it clicked with me hard and yeah. I do really like the game um I, I acknowledge it has bullshit and I don't plan on replaying it anytime soon because of that. And also it, it, it lacks in some capacities with like, there's no replayability really. There are unlockables in the battle mode, but apart from that, you play the game once and you're done. Yeah. There's, not, there's not even other difficulties. Yeah, like a, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm pre- pretty sure there's like nothing besides getting like an unlimited um, railgun launcher. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's very straightforward, but I, I do enjoy the game a lot. And I, I do think I would like to see it remade and I definitely play a remake. I'd gladly play a remake. Like um, and I think, you know, I think it deserves it more than Resi 4 does currently. But yeah, Code Veronica is an interesting title. And as I said, it ends perfectly leading into Resi 5 um, and also ends with them going off in a fighter jet and they're planning to kill all of Umbrella. Oh yeah, because um, yeah, yeah, Chris, doesn't Chris say we're going to take down Umbrella or something yeah. like that? together and nothing happens no <laughs> well they, they say that we, you and me were going to take down umbrella and then yeah. it's fighter jet and it's like okay but there's never been another game with you two in it <laughs> <laughs> and also umbrella hasn't really been main character since Veronica, really yeah so it was it was a weird it was a weird ending and also like the final um like score screen is them like holding hands like going down the street <laughs> and it's like I yeah, she's got like a arm wrapped around it. Yeah, I thought you were going to go take out Umbrella. Also, were you guys fucking? Cause... <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I like Code Veronica a lot. Um, I think because of that lack of replayability, though, I, I think I'm unlikely to play it again yeah. anytime soon. But I definitely enjoyed it, and I definitely want to see a, a, um, a remake. And I do kind of like the fact that there is a focus on action. Um you know, it's got less actual genuine creepy moments. There's a lot of stuff in that gothic mansion which is quite creepy and unsettling because, like, you've got a lot of noises going on, the setting of it. It, it, it. it has unnerving moments, but it's never as scary as some of the other games are. It's more about you get into a room with enemies. You're not really trying to avoid them. You're more just like, oh, how do I kill them as quick as I can? I but, also suppose um, it's all like the um, spooky stuff. Because uh, all the spooky stuff in Code Veronica is more front-loaded. Yeah. You kind of forget about it by the end. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, I, I actually think the first half of Code Veronica is a lot better than the second half. Yeah. But um, it's good fun regardless. And, it, you know, that's, I think that's why I like the combat aspect is because it makes the game genuinely fun. The game is fun. It's a lot of fun all the way through. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll happily say that about Code Veronica any day. Um, that sort of wraps up our segment on the tank controls era of the Resi games. Um, considering what we played. I have also played, just while we were talking about the older titles, I have played Resident Evil Survivor. I played it years ago. I've played it to completion. Like oh. Months ago. It's like the weirdest, shittiest thing on the planet. It's not like, it's not like terrible. It's, it's kind of like barely... It's, it's like... It's fine. It's just like an okay, like first person shooter what is the narrative or what is like are there other major bosses at all towards the end or anything um so like the game's about you play as um so you play as this random guy who wakes up on an island which has got like another which got a zombie outbreak on it they also have Mm -hmm. like an umbrella lab and all that typical stuff 
but it turns out towards the end of the game that you're an amnesiac who was sent there by Leon. And um, I'm pretty sure like all the bosses in the game, it's just like texture, it's just like, it's just like Mr. X from, um, uh, uh, it's just like Mr. X from Resi 2, and like Nemesis from Resi 3 just like turn up randomly. There's like enemies throughout the game. Right, okay. And it just reuses like environments and stuff. It's just like kind of shoddy and shit, but it's still like... But you finished it? Yeah, it's fun. How long did and it like, take? Two hours. It's a very, very short game. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. And you also played uh, Resi Gaiden, didn't you? Yeah, Gaiden, the Game Boy Color one. I didn't finish it because, like, I got to, um, it's like, I, I, I got to this point towards the end of the game where it's like, you have to get past this really tough enemy to be able to continue. And um, I literally didn't have the, and, uh, and I literally did have the ammunition to do it because the whole um, combat system is like a slider. Where, and you have to, like, and you have to, like, match up perfectly. To like do like critical hits and I just didn't have the ammunition to do it hmm. and they locked off all the areas by that point in the game which had like more ammunition right. so I was basically just blocked into like not finishing it and it wasn't fun enough no actually... I've not heard great things about it but yes. um I think that's all of the classic ones I played yeah definitely so yes. that wraps up the uh the tank control segment or the classic uh, segment of our retrospective so that concludes part one of our resident evil retrospective um if you'd like to watch the next part which will be discussing four five and six and the more action focused games that'll be up in the next couple of days um and i'll try and put a link here or something like that if i don't put it in the comments that i failed to do it regardless have a good day <laughs>